Hey everyone, Benzie Johnson Jr. and I'm back with part three of the perspective I've been running recently as we look into the future. This is a history of modern kids TV in the segments. Now, I suggest you watch the other two videos in this series, which you can do up here, because I do bring them up a little in this video, and it adds a lot of context to some of what I'll be talking about. This video does mostly stay on its own, though, as it's a preview of the shape of Kids TV to come. Now, we're currently a year into the 2018 to 2022 Kids Con cycle, just about. Now, it's about the point where the holdovers from last cycle run out, and we start to see the shows that may well prove to define this cycle on Kids TV. So, where exactly are we? Well, Disney is still leaving Disney XD to die, pretty much, and sadly, it doesn't look as if that will be changing in the short term, regardless of how much I want it to. Though the European production Space Chickens in Space, which sounds like a European rip of the Three Amiganauts with more inadvertence, will come to die in the US on Disney XD. It's not the same as it used to be. But it looks like spring is beginning to come to Disney Channel, and only partially because they forced it. While I was excited for it while it was announced, I haven't seen Raven's Home yet, and there's a lot that show has to live up to. I'm also interested in checking out Coop and County Ask the World, continuing that great kids con interest of kids on the internet. Started by iCarly, continued by Bizarre Bark, and currently being upheld by repeats of the aforementioned iCarly. I hope Milo Murphy's law continues to be a success, but those two are almost exclusively the end of how much I care about Disney Channel. I said it's beginning to come, not that it's 2004. Amphibia and the Owl House, while critically hailed by some other cartoon reviewers, don't strike my fancy much due to for the 101 Dalmatians rehash. The live action shows could go either way, but given that they've spent most of the past eight years blowing themselves to smithereens to anyone with a bulge in their pants, I have little confidence. Aside from reinjecting salvins of Herbie into our minds, it looks like more of the same. If Gabby Duran the Uncitables is making me want to barf in the same way I did at Miraculous Ladybug, then maybe I'll watch that. What about Cartoon Arc, the channel we love to hate? Well, no need to predict this because it's already happened according to recent ratings, which is a shock to all the channels, really. Teen Titans Go Slayer, thy name is Total Drama Rama. Once again, proving that Canada can do no wrong. Well, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than how we're doing. Besides that, I'm really weighing it out for Elliot from Earth, which is still a few years out most likely, as the next CN show I might be interested in. The remnant holdovers from 1418 I either don't like or don't care for, and of the other current shows to which that doesn't apply, I'm saving my full opinion for a future dedicated review video. Subscribe if you want to see that when that comes out. Victor and Valentino and Infinity Train, having not watched their respective pilots, sound like great shows for fans of the deep and mysterious in the manner of Gravity Falls and Adventure Time, pretty much respectively. It's only that I'd trust an early 10s cartoon arc to make, but not a late 10s cartoon arc to do well. Of the acquisitions, Mega Man Fully Charged is already on life support, and I wholly expect Bakugan Battle Planet, new Care Bears and DC Superhero Girls cartoons, and Thundercats Roar to join them in short order. Unless Roar suddenly becomes popular and dethrones Total Drama Rama as the ratings king. But that totally couldn't happen, right? Right? Minico remain in a great position to be the advocate for basic programming decency as it has been over the past number of years, and they have already shown their plans to keep the momentum going with the likes of Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I've already done two videos on at the time of this recording, watch them up there, the continuing Henry Danger and its cartoon spin-off, and the first live action entry from within this cycle, Night Squad. So I fear that Night Squad might end up being a sleeper hit that gets canned too soon, but what can I say? I love the ones who treat me bad. Double Dare will continue to be the only decent reboot in existence, and Hunter Street Season 3 is sure to rock when it hits probably around springtime next year, previous season's parent hole. But with Welcome to the Wayne and fresh Aussie import the Bureau of Magical Things, crossing shows of last and this cycle, being burnt off as we speak on their respective side channels, there is definitely a reason to worry that Nick will fall for its heavenly grace. Four reboots and revamps are in the works. One of them Preschool, one of them the Rocco movie that's M.I.A., one of them the Invader Zim movie, and the last being my childhood reboot, Rugrats, all of which can go horribly wrong in a matter of seconds. The Loud House spin-off, Los Casa Grandes, will probably do well, but like its parent, not inspire me personally to tune in. Wonder Park sounds like it'll be taking a mediocre, forgettable family movie and extending its painful, miserable lifespan multiple years longer than it ever should have been. And glitch text could be good if done right. Setup and art style will make or break this show. And I'm still waiting on Pinky Malinky. Ah, where is my sausage son? I should make that its own video. Like and comment if you want to see how that story is playing out. I am very passionate about it. Of the shows I actually decided to and could search for and not based on gut feelings, Cousins for Life will either be like Wendell and Vinny, 
thrown between Nick and Nick and Nick appropriate, and it's then not doing well either. Or like Star Falls, and it's far too Disney for Nick, and dying exclusively on those grounds. Possibly both. And Meet the Voxels will be either kinda cool in the same realm as, and or paired up with, Glitch Text. I kinda like the multiverse crossover concept happening this decade, as exemplified by the likes of Toon Marty and Pen Zero Part Time Hero, or as an expensive, flashy disaster, given they're using a game engine to create it. Again, setup, execution, and art style will make or break this show. So, big picture, it looks like Disney Channel will keep doing pretty much more of the same this cycle, as if they've learned nothing at all this decade. Disney XD will keep being sadly strung out on the street, as it has been ever since the Great Fire of 2017. Cartoon Arc has a long road ahead to prove themselves even remotely sane, much less decent and watchable again, after the atrocious cycle they've had, but I'm personally not getting my hopes up yet. And Nick has the most to lose, as they've come in from the strongest position and looks poised to take a fall, at least within the next year or so. How grand a scale of one is yet to be determined. I hope this was an interesting and informative look into the modern history of kids' television, and a little bit into its future. I hope it's given you a bit of insight into it you might not have had before. If you like this kind of stuff and want to see more of it from me, then like, share, and subscribe, because I've got something new every single week. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.